Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the likelihood of finding habitable Earth-like planets in the binary star systems. And this is based on a scientific study that came out not so long ago from when I'm making this video. So let's discover if it's possible for an Earth-like planet to survive in a binary star system and welcome to what the math. Now you might not actually realize, but this is one of the closest stars to us, or binary systems to us. And more commonly, this is known as the Alpha Centauri, although officially it was renamed into Rigel Centaurus a few years ago. I personally never used that name, it just sounds really difficult. Alpha Centauri is a lot more familiar to all of us. Now Alpha Centauri has two stars, star A and star B. We haven't really discovered any planets here. But the scientists behind this paper right here wanted to investigate would it be possible for an Earth-like planet to survive around these stars. More specifically, if we have a binary star system, would a planet be able to maintain Earth-like conditions? Now to try to understand why they're asking this question, we really need to investigate what happens to our planet Earth over the period of several thousand years. Now, there is something known as Milankovitch cycles, which refer to various climatic cycles that our planet goes through based on the eccentricity changes, the obliquity or the axial changes, and the precession changes. And all of them have different time frames, making our planet go through quite a lot of relatively difficult to predict climatic changes when it comes to looking at these climatic changes in long periods of time. In order for us to discover some sort of a terrestrial Earth-like planet somewhere out there, and in order for us to actually think that this planet might be able to maintain long period of climatic stability and of course allow for life to develop, we need to really thoroughly study these cycles and understand how they influence our planet. And this obliquity or axial tilt cycle is really, really important. You can actually kind of visibly see it right here in the simulation because you'll notice that our planet is a little bit tilted. This angle here is about 23 and a half degrees and because of this axial tilt, our planet has seasons. Basically, the winters in the North Hemisphere are colder while the summers are warmer and the opposite happens on the other side of the planet. But every 41,000 years, the planet starts tilting a little bit. Basically, it goes between about 21 degrees and about 24 and a half degrees. So this happens every 41,000 years. And to try to understand why this happens, you just have to look around our solar system. Giant massive planets like Jupiter can easily influence the orbit of pretty much any planet in the solar system, including of course Earth, and even change their axial tilts and influence them in many other ways. So the axial tilt changes because of the planetary interactions. But here's the thing though, if you look at Mars, the axial tilt here is actually higher and we think that it changes even more according to our simulations. It goes from between about 10 degrees to about 60 degrees. So there's actually a 50 degree difference compared to only like a few degree difference that Earth has. Why is that? And by the way, this is also one of the major reasons why Mars couldn't really maintain liquid water or atmosphere. Obviously, the loss of magnetosphere was one thing, but because it also wobbled so much, and it does so every 2 million years or so, once in a while, especially like when it's this way, a lot of the atmosphere will get condensed and form ice on the poles. But when it's this way, same happens along the equator belt, and eventually all of the atmosphere kind of disappears and becomes ice. So we think that this actually influenced the formation of ice on Mars and also uh, would prevent really complex life from evolving on Mars because it just doesn't have stable conditions like our own planet. But what's the difference? Why does Mars wobble and Earth doesn't? Can you take a guess? You probably already know the answer. Except for size and mass, what other major difference there is between these two planets? Well, the answer is that our planet has a really, really large, really massive moon whereas the moons of Mars are ridiculously tiny. Now, in case of our planet, technically this is actually an anomaly. 
Our moon is way, way larger and way more massive than moons of any other planets in comparison to the planetary size. As a matter of fact, certain scientists kind of refer to our moon Earth system as a binary planetary system. Some people don't even think that this qualifies as a moon. But what this object does to our planet is remarkable. Our beautiful moon actually stabilizes the axial tilt of our planet by orbiting around it. It sort of acts in the same way that the disk of a typical spinning top stabilizes it as well. So the orbit of our moon around our planet prevents the planet from tilting too much. And this, in a sense, presented our planet with a chance to have really, really stable climatic conditions for a very long time, and most importantly, allowed for complex life to evolve here over billions of years. But remember, our moon was a bit of a fluke in the way that it was created. Today we believe that our moon was created as a result of a collision with a Mars-like planet approximately 4.5 billion years ago, and its creation is not guaranteed. A collision with a planet would not necessarily create a moon-like object. This was, in a sense, a very lucky formation. And since not all planets out there are able to have moons to stabilize their axial tilt, it's very likely that not all terrestrial planets are going to be able to maintain stable climatic conditions. So now going back to the binary systems. Can a binary system stabilize a terrestrial planet in the same way that the moon does? In other words, these scientists behind this paper wanted to investigate if by being in a binary system, a typical terrestrial planet in the orbit around one of the stars would actually receive the same effects in stabilization of its axial tilt as Earth does when the Moon orbits around it. And as you can probably guess, what they discovered is that there are certain situations, actually many situations, where binary systems are perfect for stabilizing the axial tilts of planets. And by using our nearest neighbor as a kind of a foundation for the simulation, we were able to create a model that investigated the effects that binary systems would create and discovered the necessary conditions for the most stable binary system where a typical terrestrial planet can exist. Well, first of all, the bad news is that it seems that our neighbor, uh, Alpha Centauri, might not actually be the best place to discover such terrestrial planets that would be stable and would have necessary climatic conditions. Mostly because these two stars are just a little bit too close to each other at a distance of about 35 astronomical units. And the scientists behind this paper discovered that to have the most likely chance for a stable terrestrial planet with Earth-like conditions, either the primary star would have to be smaller, so about 80% the mass of our Sun, or the distance between stars would have to be much larger. So for example, since Alpha Centauri is about 10% more massive than our Sun, it sort of falls under this area here in the middle, and for it to have about 90% chance uh, for a terrestrial planet to have stable axial conditions, it would have to have another star that's roughly around 170 astronomical units away from it. In other words, if I were to try to create this here in Universe Sandbox, this system would look something like this. Here are the two stars, and the nearest star, Alpha Centauri, um, which actually has its own habitable zone here too, would have to have its planet orbiting at a distance of roughly around one astronomical unit to maybe about two astronomical units, so somewhere right here for example, for it to have stable conditions and, most importantly, the axial tilt that is not going to change too much. This would create a 90% chance for a very stable planet but only if it's located in the same plane of orbit as the two stars. If, however, the orbit of this planet is inclined in some way, or if this planet has its own moon similar to the moon of Earth, the simulations show that this would also dramatically decrease the chances for stability. So, having a moon in a binary system is apparently not really good for these planets to have stable conditions, which would of course make the climate on this planet extremely chaotic, making this planet very difficult for any life to evolve on. So in that sense, this is a pretty interesting study because binary systems are very, very common out there. There are a lot of different binary stars and many of them, just like Alpha Centauri, are very similar to our own Sun, which we expect to have at least a few terrestrial planets around. And what's more interesting about the study is that today we know that a vast majority of G-type stars 
Basically, stars similar to our own sun usually have at least one companion. In other words, once again, our sun is a bit weird, it doesn't have any companions, while most G-stars, like Alpha Centauri, do have a partner. And in many cases, this partner is at just the right distance to allow for a stable planet to have stable climate. Which is, of course, why studies like this are somewhat important, because one day we might be able to find Earth 2.0 orbiting around one of these stars. The other surprise discovery was that apparently the chances for having a stable axial tilt increase dramatically if the planet spins in retrograde motion similar to how Venus spins. In other words, if it spins the opposite way from the way that it orbits. And today we believe that Venus does so because it eventually gains so much atmosphere that the atmosphere itself slowed down the planet and through various interactions with the Sun it then starts spinning backwards. We don't really know exactly how this would work around other planets, but it seems that it stabilizes the axial tilt as well, allowing planets to actually have stable climatic conditions. But nevertheless, this still doesn't change the fact that having a star like our sun and the moon like our moon is still the best chance for any planet out there to have stable conditions like on planet Earth. In other words, Earth is still the only planet we know where life can definitely exist. And although we're still not actually any closer to finding other planets that could potentially host life, we're still going to keep looking and studies like this allow us to create models and various theories in helping us focus what stars we should be looking at. So it seems that binary systems do have a chance to host a really interesting planet. A planet that could easily maintain stability and create necessary conditions for life even without a moon. And that's actually really important. But anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who wants to learn more about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before. You should come back, you really should. Or, or, I'm going to destroy this planet. You better come back. Oh, uh, yeah. Accidentally clicked on it. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye bye. Oh, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It does actually help me quite a lot. And the explosion created by this planet is actually quite remarkable. I'm sort of enjoying watching this. I should be doing this more often. Maybe I will. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.